On this week's Creek to Coast, we uncover a few of Cape York's best kept secrets. Ghost towns, gold mines and great four wheel driving. It's a mineral with a colourful history, an inert, inactive, and for more than a few, intoxicating precious metal prized by fossickers, collectors, and investors. A brilliant conductor of electricity, highly malleable, and incredibly ductile, it's one of the most desired substances in the world. Despite all those practical applications, what really makes this stuff so valuable is its rarity and its beauty. I mean, just look at it. Empires have been built, wars have been started, and blokes have even been driven mad in the search for nuggets like this. Now, hopefully today, though, we're gonna keep our sanity. We're gonna explore an area that's no stranger to this stuff. We're gonna go for gold in Cape York. Righto, Glenda, tighten her up, mate. Nothing like a bit of momentum, Jackie. This week sees us tackling one of Australia's most iconic touring destinations, Cape York. And we're starting where all good off-road journeys through this part of the world should commence, ARB Cairns, where I've arranged to meet up with the manager, Lachlan Brosnan, along with a couple of the other ARB boys, Dave Archer from Toowoomba, Greg McDonald from Rocky, Glenn Sweeney from Burley, and from Capella Bar in Brisbane, John Parkinson. This is HEMA's latest HN6 Navigator. Fantastic thing, it's got all the city maps built into it, but better than that, it's got the four wheel drive tracks. So take the kids to music practice or find your favourite fishing hole in the middle of Cape York. This can do it. As a matter of fact, it can do anything. Don't believe me? Watch this. Our journey this week will take us north of Cairns through the legendary goldfield region of the Southern Cape. We're going back in time following in the footsteps of pioneering gold miners through country that's remained relatively untouched for the last hundred or so years. All right, well maybe we're exaggerating the capabilities a bit, but given we're gonna be tracing gold history back a couple of centuries, we figured the Herbert and Historical Village was the perfect place to start. It's a faithful recreation of traditional life in far north Queensland, where you can literally take a walk, or in this instance, take a drive through history. Lockie, I reckon we'll be able to fill up down here. Mate, you'd, you'd know how to use those bowsers. What are you saying, they're old bowsers? Oh, I'm old. Back from when you and Adam were a boy, mate. Yeah. Of course, not all the history up here has been recreated. Heading north along the Mount Mulligan Road gives us our first taste of the dirt and our first glimpse of a Cape York ghost town. Though it was black coal rather than glittering gold that led to the boom here at Mount Mulligan, it's an example of the history on show by the side of the road if you're willing to head off-road in this part of the world. Thankfully, there are more signs of life at our overnight stop, the iconic Palmer River Roadhouse. Perched by a stream that was considered one of the richest alluvial fields of gold anywhere in the country. Once the river of life for a bustling region, it's now a quiet spot for travellers to refuel, relax, and wash down the dust of a day's driving. Andrew, in the heyday, when Palmer River was a gold mining mecca, how many people were in here? Yeah, about 20,000 people. And mate, today, how many do you think are in the same area? Yeah, there'd be, it's hard to say, 150. Andrew Stewart spent his entire life in North Queensland, including the last few years running the roadhouse with his wife, Karen. I reckon he's the perfect bloke for a place like this, with a sense of humour as dry as the countryside and a keen interest in the region's past and present. And mate, it's incredible. I mean, the Palmer River's just here and there could be huge nuggets of gold buried in the bottom of it. No one knows if there is or there isn't. There could be. And there's, there's blokes out everywhere looking for gold right L there. Literally, yeah. yeah. There's 
quite a few people around, probably more than meets the eye. You're taking us to Maytown tomorrow? Yep. And mate, the chances of me finding a gold nugget at Maytown, are they like what, putting a dollar coin in a slot machine and getting the $50,000 jackpot or what? Yeah. About the You're same. You're better off having put in $2 in the <laughs> slot machine. <laughs> After the break, we leave the beaten track behind in search of our fortune and a bit of fun in the Forbies. So be sure to stick around. A fitting start to a day in search of gold around the Palmer River region of far north Queensland. If you're considering a trip up this way, you need to base your plans around a couple of things. Fuel availability and consumption. Diesel and unleaded, pretty easy to come by, but premium's out of the question. But regardless of what you're going to use, you need to have the range, and that's a long-range fuel tank, best way. This vehicle has got 270 litres capacity. That's going to give us about 1,400 kilometres worth of range, so we won't have to stop again this week. Andrew's kindly offered to run us out to Maytown, which was gold mining ground zero at the end of the 19th century. I'm with Lockie in the 70 Series U, which he's kitted out specifically for exploring the far north. John's also got his trusty U, which has plenty of Cape and Territory trips under its belt. Same with Greg's Cruiser Wagon, which has also seen its fair share of rough roads. Glenn's Ranger is the newest car in the fleet, fresh from a complete ARB rework at his store in Burley. It's getting a real baptism of fire this week. And who could forget Dave's old reliable short wheelbase Maverick, proving you don't need a brand new car to tackle a trip like this. Hey Roger, just coming into Maytown here. Bit hard to imagine 20,000 people living here. When you look at this place now, a bit derelict and in its heyday. You're looking at the ruins of what was once a bustling community which boasted a main street with three banks, a hospital and dozens of shops, two thirds of which were run by Chinese proprietors who made up the bulk of the population. But since it was abandoned 60 or so years ago, this hub of commerce and industry has gradually been reclaimed by the elements, making it a surreal lunch setting, ironically at the site of the old bakery. So this is Leslie Street. Leslie Street, mate. Yeah, my town, mate, 20,000 people. Beautiful slate gutter. Around here, yeah. Mate, I can't yep. believe it. It's just straight as a gun barrel. As good as the day it was put in. And it is. Sure is, yeah. So they, and when they done it, they done it properly. Hard to imagine. And full of shops? Full of shops. Up to 30 pubs were here. 30? 30, yeah. So. Be thirsty work morning then. <laughs> it is hot enough weather, eh? Isn't it? Relics of the mines themselves are scattered throughout the area, telling their own stories of a once thriving industry powered by hard labour and raging furnaces. But it's incorrect to say that ghosts are the only residents left in the area. There are still privately run mines and a few roaming prospectors. Just out of Maytown, tucked in by the bank of the North Palmer, is where Frank Cepedo has spent the last two decades carving out a comfy little oasis for himself as a modern day miner. He's fresh back from a morning's fossick through the hills, and although these days he's got a bit more modern technology on his side, it's the same basic process that would have been going on here 100 years ago. Sometimes, OK, we explore and push out a bit further, try and find new, new areas. Like, we go to places where, mate, white man hasn't even walked yet. We're yeah. the first ones ever there. And, OK, sometimes we strike it lucky, and sometimes we wasted our time. There's no gold there. So, mate, we were at the Mount Louisa Battery. It must have been 40-something degrees in the shade. There was an old boiler there <laughs> running the, the rock crusher. Yeah, you're saying 40 degrees there. Now, don't forget, that's a boiler. So, that, yeah. you know, you're putting in there firewood yep. in the middle of the day. So it must have been 60 degrees around that. Mm. And look, they were getting the goal. So, they're, again, there was something there to keep them interested, you know. Yeah. While Andrew's due back at the roadhouse, we're heading north to a spot called Jowalla Binna on the old coach road, which was the original route into town, and it doesn't seem to have changed since the day it was cut by blokes using wooden tools. It's strictly four-wheel drive only, a great opportunity to put the trucks through their paces. Oh, 
The track takes us directly up the Jessup Range, a challenging climb with plenty of rocks and ruts. And you have to take your hat off to the horses that pull coaches loaded with people, supplies, and even the crusher batteries that we saw back in town. No doubt a far cry from the comfy seat of a modern four-wheel drive with old man emu shocks and springs underneath. It's slow, but steady going. That is, until we reach an obstacle which stops us in our tracks. As you can see, this wild track has got even wilder. We could give it a go, but we've got all the gear we need, tents, swags, food, everything laid on. We're gonna make camp here and have a crack in the morning when we're all feeling a bit fresher. So stick around, after the break, you'll get to see us get up this track. Welcome back to Creek to Coast. You've rejoined us halfway along the old coach road which runs between Maytown and Laura in far north Queensland. How about this for an early morning heart starter? We've had a good night's sleep and a hearty brekkie. Lockers locked up, low range, first gear, and Lachlan's getting all the advice in the world, so it should be good. Hey, you ready? As we discussed, mate, just keep it moving. Bit of momentum and not too much or you'll get the front end to fly up in the air, so just go steady. This is the perfect demo of diff locks in action. With a slippery gouged out step up, the rear end struggles for traction, but the front axle can pick up the slack with both wheels able to claw up the rock. But John's ute only has a rear locker fitted, making things that little more difficult. Righto, Jackie, we'll just get the boys to do a bit of track repair work and have another go at that. Nothing like a bit of momentum, Jackie. The road eventually empties us out at the Little Laura River, which cuts through a relatively small station in the scrub, Jowwallabina Safari Camp. There are cleared areas, cabins and bush kitchens, but the truly unique feature about this place is the artwork that's been discovered in the hills. Treasures that many consider more valuable than gold. As Matt Trezice explains, this is Quincan country one of the few places where it's possible to see firsthand how art and culture came together in traditional Indigenous life. The most recent thing here is this little figure of a demon, or quinkin as we call them. But you can see that there are other paintings here which are considerably older. Matt's father Percy first started poking around these hills in his Series 1 Land Rover back in the 60s, when little was understood or even known about the existence of what's now considered one of the most significant collections of rock art anywhere in the world. And how did he actually find the bulk of it? Yeah, well, he was a pilot. He would often uh, divert a little bit on, on the, you know, on a flight from Cairns to Weeper, and uh, he's marking them on a map. And then when he gets four or five days off, a couple of weeks later end of the Land Rover, drive up, camp for a few days, go walking with his mates, sometimes with us kids, and often camping by firelight, looking up at these uh, amazing ancient paintings. Fantastic. So I suppose we all owe the Land Rover a bit of a debt as well. Yeah. It's a fascinating story. In From words, early Aboriginal and, uh, artists to the gold rush that forced most of them to leave the area, and the work being done by a family dedicated to preserving this precious history. Well worth a look if you're planning a trip up here. The next leg of our trek sees us rejoin the Peninsula Development Road, headed south to one of my all-time favourite watering holes. The Lion's Den Hotel has been welcoming travellers in this part of the world for well over a century. 
Originally built to service the local tin mine, nowadays it's become a must-see spot for four-wheel drivers either starting or finishing the nearby Bloomfield or Crab tracks. Well, after three days of dust and heat, nothing like a bit of greenery. Even better, we've got the most beautiful swimming hole down here and the Lion's Den Hotel right there for a cold drink and a hot feed. Can't wait. After the break, we head into the hills tackling one of North Queensland's most hardcore off-road trails, the Mighty Crab. So be sure to stick around. Welcome back to Creek to Coast at the one and only Lion's Den Hotel near Cooktown in tropical North Queensland. Today's going to be our hardest drive yet, longest one too. The last few days we've hit bumps, rocks, water, everything. So we've been right through the car, checked everything for tightness, nothing broken, nothing cracked, nothing about to fall off. As you know, it's a lot easier to fix it here right now rather than on the side of the zigzag track later on today. How are we looking, Lockie? All good, mate. Beauty. The Kreb, which derived its name from the Cairns Regional Electricity Board, is considered one of the toughest trails in the Cape. Though it's just 60 k's in length, it's a twisty stretch of dirt traversing every ridge and valley of the rugged McDowell Range. But what makes it particularly challenging is its surface, clay soil that is as slick as ice after the slightest of showers, which are pretty common in an area known as the wet tropics. Though our first obstacle comes from the complete opposite end of the scale. Far north Queensland at the end of the dry season, you can be sure there's going to be fires and you can also be sure there's going to be trees across the track. We've got quite a good sized one here, but we've got all the recovery gear and a winch and we're going to get ourselves out of trouble. With a winch installed and a good understanding of how to use it, it's easy to turn a major obstacle like this into a minor inconvenience. The worn 9.5 on the front of Glen's Ranger, teamed up with a well-placed snatch block, makes pretty short work of this roadblock. Well, a couple of months ago in the Vic High Country, we spent two days in sleet and snow, soaring and winching fallen trees. And I've got to tell you, here in the tropics, it's fantastic. All you got is a bit of sweat. I don't think I've ever been on a trail that contrasts so quickly. From dry scrub to lush green valleys, you can be driving in dust one minute and dropping into a water crossing the next. A lot of people think if water doesn't come over the bonnet, they're not going to have a problem. But in fact, most air is taken from behind the headlight and that's where it gets into the engine. With a snorkel, the air gets in up there. And the only problem you're going to have is forgetting to wind up the windows. The track takes in sections of private property, native title, World Heritage Area and National Park, which is managed by parks and wildlife rangers like Lyle Nola. Lyle, the incredible thing I've seen is, is how fast it changes from this heavy timber and jungle scrub to sort of open nothing. It's a reflection of soil types and just how eroded the hillsides are becoming. Um, the valleys retain most of the fertile soils and that's why you get your wet tropical yeah. rainforests in those sorts of sites and then up on the hills where it's exposed to wind. Um, the rain isn't absorbed into the soils such as readily, and so that supports a much sparser sort of vegetation yeah. type. And talking of rain, this track, it'd be a nightmare, wouldn't it? Wouldn't There's it? times of the year where this is just closed down and it's impassable, it. and we've had people stuck here for weeks. Okay. Given the unpredictable conditions, Cairns Regional Council manages access to the Kreb. You can find all the details on their site. Toward the southern end of the track, the climbs become more technical. Nothing too extreme, but enough to give the cars one last workout. Well, a crab track has a fearsome reputation, and you can see why. In the wet, it'll be absolutely impossible. The dirt finishes at the foothills of the range, but not before a final crossing of the Daintree River. Apparently in full flood, it's a sight to behold. Today, however, the gentle flow is a perfect send-off to a spectacular week in the Cape. 
From glittering gold to lush green rainforest, it's been a trip that's included a bit of everything. And hopefully, you're feeling inspired to start planning an adventure like this for yourself. And if so, you need to start by getting the car sorted at ARB. Like all of us on this trip, most of the blokes in store have probably been where you want to go and know what you need to get there. Visit the website to find your nearest store for more information about suspension to snatch straps and everything in between. Sadly though, our trip's drawn to a close at a familiar landmark for plenty of four-wheel drivers, the famous Daintree Ferry. Although this ferry is the beginning of most people's off-road adventure, it's the end of ours. So if there's one thing I'd like you to take from this week's show, is that anyone with a four-wheel drive can tackle a trip like we have. For all the tough tracks that we tackle, there are easier alternatives. So that means you can load the vehicle, bring the kids, and take them through a walk through the living history that we've seen. And they'll learn more in a week up here than they will in a year of visiting museums in Brisbane. So that's it from Creek to Coast this week. Next week, back with Scotty and the gang. See you then. Creek to Coast is produced in proud partnership with BCF. Boating, camping and fishing, this is living. We drive vehicles supplied and serviced by the Motorama Group.